guy in a movie theater notices that sitting next to him is somebody who seems to look like a rabbit. Are you a rabbit? Yes, I am. What are you doing at the movies? Well, said the rabbit, I like the book. <laughs> Rabbits symbolize new beginnings because they're a sign of rebirth. Uh, the um, coming back from the darkness of the winter, this renewal is often symbolized by bunny rabbits. Some cultures believe that rabbits are signs of protection, good luck, um, love of children. In the Chinese tradition, the spring festival is the biggest celebration of the year. The rabbit is the fourth animal in the Chinese zodiac. In that culture, the rabbit is known to be the luckiest of all the 12 animals. It symbolizes mercy, elegance, and beauty. People who are born in the year of the rabbit are calm and peaceful. Throughout Asia, the rabbit is seen as, as the creature on the moon, not the face of a man, but a rabbit leaning over a mortar, preparing something. In, in Japan, they're specific that it's sweet treats, mochi, that is being made while they're watching the moon there. Um, the ability to burrow into the earth suggests a connection to the spiritual world. In shamanism, rabbits represent intuition. It's a trickster character representing our cleverness, our ability to be uh, ingenious and, and solve problems. Symbols of fertility, prosperity. In ancient Greece, they were sacred to Aphrodite, the goddess of love. So here's good fortune, wealth, procreation, positivity, uh, abundance, renewal. Remember, a positive attitude may not solve all your problems, but it will annoy enough people to be worth the effort. <laughs> the mischief in that joke represents the trickster that I'm trying to illustrate in today's story, which is the tale of Peter Rabbit by Beatrix Potter, a Unitarian who lived in London but summered in the north. And Anne and I visited the place that she lived in Scotland where she would capture rabbits and tame them as pets. And one of them was Peter, the character in this story. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. Their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail, and Peter. Now, three of them have fairy tale names. Peter has a regular name, so he's the character we're going to follow. They lived in a sandbank, and they had a mother and, and a scary story. Don't ever visit the garden. Your father had an accident. Well, the accident was he ended up in a pie, so it's a pretty tragic background. There's trauma in the family story. The fear of abandonment, the need for self-sufficiency is all implied by this familiar tale. We're in the realm of the child. The child archetype evokes uh, freshness, newness, excitement, and learning. The innocence, which is the being not well-informed innocence that may be solved in the course of the tale if we don't end up in a pie. The child also suggests a uh, wholeness and invincibility. A child doesn't know. They don't live forever, so they remind us of the immortal. Also, stories about children survive. The children may have grown old. The children may have gone on. But the stories live on with us. You may have heard this story in your childhood, or maybe not. But it's been around for over 100 years. There must be something to it that people still refer to it. Now, Peter had a little blue coat. So we have an anthropomorphized animal suggesting a bridging of the animal realm and the human, the physical and the consciousness. The task then in our task is to integrate those two dimensions and be honorable to both of them. Now run along, the mother says, she has errands to do and don't get into mischief, I'm going out. She took her basket and her umbrella and went out to do some chores. She's walking through the woods. We have a love of nature. We have Beatrix Potter's love of nature, a reverence for that dimension, which you don't have to be into shamanism to appreciate as a source of the holy. The Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail go out and, and pick berries nearby, but Peter immediately heads for the garden. This is the forbidden zone. He's naughty. 
He's the one we are fascinated with. It's always the transgressive character in the story that gets our attention because we try to live proper lives. We don't indulge ourselves as often as the characters in the story in going into the taboo. Now, on a positive note, this is getting beyond the familiar, as in familial, as in the wisdom we learn from a family, which is important. It's all the practical guidance. This is the other. This is the rest of what we might need to know. So it is an important and dangerous adventure that is necessary if we are to be whole. The transgressive move is the quest for self-discovery, a pilgrimage to find our own wholeness or holiness, to balance our abundant proper side with the rest. This is balancing freedom and responsibility, imagination and practicality. What does he do when he gets there? He eats. There is abundance here. This is a place of great fertility. He ate some lettuce, some French beans, and some radishes. Actually, he overeats a bit. But we do need to feast on the wonders if we can find our way to the things that we have been needing. He goes to look for some parsley to settle his tummy. Too much of a good thing, May West said, is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> But we do need to be prudent. He doesn't know that yet. He doesn't ha have the balance that he is seeking, but we hope that it will come with his adventures. So the cop stops a car, and, and he's been driving a little erratically, and he notices there's a rabbit in the, in the passenger seat, and he, he turns to the driver, he says, what are you driving with a rabbit in the car? That's an animal, take it to the zoo. And, and a week later, the, the cop pulls over the same car, and wouldn't you know there's a rabbit? He's, you are driving, I remember you from last week. There's a rabbit in that car. I, I, I thought I told you to take that to the zoo. I, I did, we had a great time. Tomorrow we're going to Disneyland. <laughs> There's no accounting for taste in jokes, but. Um, now, Mr. McGregor, who keeps that garden, notices Peter. Here is the danger. It was Mr. McGregor who caught Peter's father, who became a pie, meat pie, rabbit pie. This is our need for order. It is important. But it, in this story, it's a rather stern authority figure. It can be overdone. It's the inner critic. There's such a thing as too much order. So we identify more with rabbit, the rabbit in the tale, the trickster, as he faces the harsh reality as Mr. McGregor chases him with a rake. He loses. Peter loses one of his shoes and then another. He will eventually lose that pretty little blue jacket. That is his persona, his vision, how he looks to others will gradually get challenged as this goes along. We need to lose that from time to time because it can become frozen. We can get caught up in how we look to others and not be growing. After he lost his shoes, he could run faster because it could run on all, all four legs. You see a play between the anthropomorphized character and the rabbit animal as we go along in the tale. He gets caught in the net that's out there just for gardening reasons, but he will be, he will be in a pie soon if he doesn't get out and he, he despairs. It's when the birds come along, friendly sparrows, and tell them to try harder. The exact language is they, they uh, fly to him in great excitement and implore him to exert himself. Those characters are terribly in important in these old children's wisdom tales. That's the fairy godmother. That's the help helpful stranger. That is your guardian angel looking out for you. And it helps. He, he, he mobilizes and gets away. Now Mr. McGregor comes out after him with a sieve to, to capture him, and he has to slip away again. And again, finally, he hides in a watering can. Clever. There's the trickster. There's the ingenuity. However, there's a great deal of water in it. This could be seen as the baptismal moment in the story. It is a tale of initiation, a rite of passage that's going on. A little water is that purification stage. Wouldn't you know, he sneezes. That alerts his, uh, his enemy here to where he is, and he has to run again. Uh, Mr. McGregor almost steps on him, kicking him, and he finally manages to get away, to slip away. These traumas are necessary. These traumas are the normal struggles of life. They are not unfortunate mistakes. They are crucial to the lesson. He finally cries trying to get out of a certain door. He's more boy again. He wobbles back and forth between human and animal. 
Well, so do we. That is, sometimes our physicality needs the attention. Sometimes our more rational, higher consciousness gets. But this is the bridging of the animal the human, or the mortal and the divine, the conscious and the mystery, the sacred and the practical. He sees a cat. He knows to stay away from the cat. I'm thinking of my big cats. They would have that rabbit so fast. There are rabbits in the back door, but I have indoor cats, so they stay at the windows and watch those rabbits. It's quite a lovely honor of spring to see the rabbits return. He sees Mr. McGregor out in a field and finally runs past him and gets away. We endure. It takes moxie. This is the triumph of resilience. We have all survived adversity. This is a celebration of courage and determination. Mr. McGregor puts the jacket and the shoes out as a scarecrow. That's a sign of death. Close call. We just barely made it. This is a transformative story. This is a story about developing our self-acceptance, about getting through whatever critical crisis we have, not only in the world, but with ourselves. He makes it home and flops down in the nice soft stand, and his mother comes back. She's got some cooking to do. Hmm. So here he has been disobedient. His mother doesn't really criticize him. Um, he comes back to a safe place. Um, the instinctual has had its turn, and now it is time for the familial. He has some contradictory feelings about coming home. The adventure was wonderful, but home is warm and safe. We need both. Mother makes uh, milk and um, bread for Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail. Peter has a little bit of a cold from being in that water can. He gets chamomile tea and goes to bed. This is our ability to calm ourselves. It's called self-soothing, to find comfort. It's also knowing where we can get it from others. Beatrix Potter comments, what heaven can be more real than to retain the spirit world of childhood, tempered and balanced by knowledge and common sense. She's describing the integration that happens through our adventures if we are paying attention, if we are daring enough to have the adventures. So in summary, notice that uh, Peter Rabbit's springtime rite of passage takes place within the context of belonging. He's out on his own in the middle of the story, but at the beginning and at the end, he has found the support that makes his boldness possible that prevents this from being a tragic story like his father's. We go off into the realm of our potential, represented by the fertile landscape of the garden. Our best resources lie in nature. The journey is distressing, but worth the risk. It is, after all, the exploration of the depth of the human soul. Mr. McGregor is the shadow dimension of the inner pilgrimage. We must face whatever in ourselves has seemed ugly. This is crucial. It is not misfortune. It is our golden opportunity. Family is our inner calm. There is a place inside that offers comfort. It is steady, and it is on our side. So here are the, the points to remember. Here is the action step part. First, claim the orderly energy represented by Mr. McGregor. The reliable predictability of a tidy garden is useful. We need to work out the balance between our prudent side and those wild, daring impulses that make this a good story. Second, be reflective. It is good to reassess situations and ourselves repeatedly. We need to learn from experience, be humble, and be open to help when it comes. Persistence helps. This is not a random series of mistakes. It is an intricate, transformative process. Third, develop ingenuity. When in a lurch, we must rely on wit and resourcefulness, like Peter. Being adaptable, able to think on our feet, being able to find creative solutions, these things are crucial. Honor the inner rabbit. 
The instinctual dimension of our makeup is a kind of wisdom that is worth investment of time and effort. Fourth, be sure to have adventures. Press beyond the familiar ideas to the unexplored parts of life and the inner world. We are meant to claim the treasures of the human endowment, even if fear and sadness at times are part of the picture. And finally, know your way back home. Tend to the home fires. Find a congregation. Find friends. Know the part of yourself that will make some chamomile tea. And find a few nurturing people in this world who might occasionally make some for you. I will close with the words of Rainer Maria Rilke. It is spring again. The earth is like a child that knows poems by heart. <laughs>